My name is Kyle McDonald. Can you hear me? Yeah? Great. All right. This is my presentation. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of different things, um, and I'm still not really sure if there's one way I can categorize myself. So I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff at you, loosely grouped into three categories. Um, in 1998, this is kind of where I got started. <laughs> I started writing QBasic, I started writing ActionScript, and processing came out in 2003, and I started making crazy particle systems and getting really excited about interaction and uh, mixing that with code. So I was working on my computer science degree, and then I started hearing about open frameworks, uh, which is what I'm, like Golan said, what I'm here working on right now, um, uh, which was a lot like processing, et cetera, et cetera. Golan, Golan told you already. So that's why I've been using a lot for the last, the last couple of years, uh, is using open frameworks to make um, interaction, interactive pieces, uh, work with open source as, um, as art, think about philosophy of open source, think about um, noise, glitch, all these things. Um, so, uh, quick rundown of a few projects. This is a project I finished this uh, last summer called KeyTweeter. Um, uh, it's a screenshot from old Twitter. This was, uh, I basically, I decided to tweet everything I typed on my keyboard. Um, I just had, you, have you seen like keyloggers before? Keyloggers are these programs that people install remotely to try and figure out what you're typing uh, and it sends back to a server somewhere or stores it on your computer so that they can get it later. Well, I thought it would be interesting to have everyone be able to have access to what I was, what I was typing because I, I didn't really understand Twitter at the time and I thought it was kind of weirdly introspective. So I did this for a year and then I understood it and uh, <laughs> now I actually have a real Twitter. Um, yeah, that was, that was an interesting experience. Um, I think my computer just died. No. Oh, it's a link. <laughs> it's not doing anything. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Totally different projects. This is Portrait Machine. This is a project I worked on with Theo Watson here. Um, we were basically looking at trying to make connections between people. Um, uh, so we would do all this complex computer vision analysis. This was really, uh, this is where Open Frameworks came in really helpful because it's uh, computer vision tools are really strong. Uh, uh, so we put people next to each other and uh, let's say you had someone who was really short, maybe we would surround them with two people who were really tall, just for fun, on these three monitors so you can see in this picture. Um, or if you had someone wearing a green shirt, they would have other two people who were wearing green shirts next to them. Uh, we are doing all kinds of visualizations and matching whether they were smiling or frowning, um, uh, their skin colors, their hair colors, uh, all these different things. And um, we just wanted to create some interesting juxtapositions between different people. Um, uh, yeah, so th those are both kind of smaller scale interactive projects from the all the way down to just me interacting with it and other people kind of seeing the audience to people interacting with it on a maybe two or three person level. Um, and then there's kind of larger scale projects I've worked on, like uh, this is a project called Nightlights that happened in New Zealand um, uh, a year ago now. Um, that was basically a large projection onto a building, projection mapping, um, using the building as a surface for doing physics simulations and things like that. And people would walk up to the building and they would see their silhouette projected they could interact with all these interesting systems. If you were here last night, you saw Theo's Funky Forest. I think it shares a lot with that. And as far as having an augmented environment, that's kind of playful. And um, uh, and yeah, and it's kind of inviting for people of all ages. And yeah, so this was, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, mm. <laughs> There's this interesting thing with processing, if you've ever used it before. Um, if you want to export your code to the internet, um, you have to, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to export your code to the internet, it'll give you an HTML file, and by default, it includes a source code link in there. Um, this was kind of my first uh, introduction, like I said, 2003 to open source, um, and since then, I've been kind of, um, that's pervaded pretty much everything I've been doing. Um, I, around the same time, I tried to start writing like uh, tutorials um, for the very basic ideas I understood um, and uh, posting videos with ideas and then not just the videos with um, the pieces but also how to do them so other people could replicate it. Um, sharing lots of videos, sharing bookmarks, sharing music, uh, sharing thoughts and blogs, um, sharing processing sketches, 
uh, sharing little thoughts with tweets, sharing instructions via instructables, um, responding to people's comments and interacting with people and really creating dialogues, um, sharing code on Google Code, sharing code on GitHub, sharing all these things on my website. And my website's kind of become this place that's a, more like a portal rather than um, um, a place like a repository. Um, so I think maybe from this little, oh, I can't actually do that, <laughs> I was gonna go back, but it's slow. Uh, from this little source code link, um, all these things have happened where I've started to become more and more open, maybe to the point of becoming too open with KeyTweeter, uh, and, uh, and kind of sharing and interacting with people um, and embedding myself kind of in, um, in a culture, in a community that isn't really focused on me in any way, but it's focused on the interactions between people. Um, so one of the more uh, um, effective <laughs> open source projects I've been working on um, is a do-it-yourself 3D scanner, which is kind of, uh, I stopped working on it recently <laughs> because this came out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, so I, I started working on this about a year and a half before the Connect came out. Um, and I was getting kind of decent scans, some things with um, co uh, basic color in them. I was doing it in real time, which was kind of a, um, a neat, neat ability. Um, but it took a lot of, it took a lot of uh, research and um, yeah, people made interesting things with it. It was something like this. Here, I'll show a quick clip. Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's me. <laughs> So I basically, I wrote this code that allowed you to do this with a projector and a camera, replacing what was you know, previously thousands of dollars and has now been replaced by this. Um, uh, so tools that everyone kind of has access to. Um, and because of that, I ended up getting a bunch of people who took the source code and made music videos with it, made uh, introductions to film festivals, made um, uh, just their own experiments, just played around, learned about 3D scanning, um, people started getting together and improving the software. Um, it's kind of like a mini open framework experience for me because, um, yeah, you can, yeah, I got a better idea of how people contribute to, uh, to open source code when it's like a really, something everyone's invested in. Um, even things that I never expected to be used for. This was, uh, this is a student in, um, in Greece who's been reconstructing um, like amphora. These vessels that you can find are like these really old um, containers uh, using the 3D scan to reconstruct that. Mm. Okay, I'll mention one more kind of older piece. Um, this is only everything lasts forever. Uh, it's a piece I worked on for my master's thesis, finished half a year ago. Um, I had this question for a few years, which was how many sounds can we hear? As humans, like what? What's the? If you were to count out all the sounds that we could hear, what would that number be? Um, and there's a lot of questions that come out of that, like, well, how do you find a sound? Like, what's an atomic sound? You know, is it still a different sound when you combine them together? And so I tried to refine the question. I broke it down to like, okay, uh, you know, what's what's the smallest sound that we can kind of distinguish from each other, and how many of those are there? Um, and I did a lot of research, and I tried to figure out what the limits of our sort of psychoacoustic ability were. Um, and I found that there was an answer already. Actually, well, it wasn't really an answer, but it was an attempt at making an answer. And the answer was uh, the MP3 file format. Um, the reason the MP3 file format's an answer is because we basically had a bunch of German engineers that got together and decided, here's what we can hear. We're going to put this into a file format. Um, and uh, that, you know, that's what MP3 is. It's basically their understanding of what we can tell the difference between. Um, so I decided uh, it'd be interesting to try and go through all those sounds and see what they sounded like, see what their understanding of our hearing ability actually was, and maybe try and arrange them in an interesting way. So I wrote this really long uh, sound composition that's about as long as, uh, about as long as the universe will live, so 10 to the 450 years long. Uh, and uh, hopefully a really uh, very brief excerpt from that. Um, let's see, just had it a second ago. It's 
So this is from someone in the middle.
deciding whether you want to go through through the projector menu in this way or that way, um, or I don't know, like using um, using GLT pots. Anybody know the GLT pot reference? Raise your hand. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Using GLT pots. Like thinking about like what it means to use your computer as a computer. Um, have any other? Yeah. Yeah. Zooming around, playing with stuff like that. Yeah. Um, how much? Wrap up. All right, thanks. Um, so I have to pick. I'll show this one. Um, one last project. So I worked on this for a director called Chris Milk um, for a store in Manhattan. Um, it was a Wired magazine. They were having like a temporary store. I worked on it with uh, Golan Levin and uh, Emily Gobel, who uh, was, works with Theo Watson. Um, and let's see. Oh, okay. There we go. The idea was there are these birds flocking around on this wall that's like 20 feet high, kind of moving around. You walk up to it, and kind of out of nowhere. Oh, sorry, the audio is not good on this one. Out of nowhere, they decide to attack you. <laughs> so you're just kind of standing there, and they, they take chunks out of you. And it's actually kind of violent. <laughs> it wasn't my idea, but I had a lot of fun making this. <laughs> um, so this is kind of I, this is kind of a funny project because this is the kind of project I like to make, but it wasn't really my idea to make. Um, but I still want to share it because I like the results. Um, so I'll show you a quick, uh, give you a quick idea of what it looks like, and uh, or a better idea of what it looks like, and then. So, uh, where's my mouse? There it is. So they take away red boxes, red outline boxes. <laughs> That's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me talk. Uh,